on this week's Faz TV. We're back in Shetland, gaining a unique insight into Saxavord, the first fully licensed vertical launch spaceport in Europe. Elizabeth Johnson explains why Unst is the perfect location for rocket launches, as well as the benefits the spaceport provides to the local community on Shetland. We also speak to crofter Richard Spence, who reflects on his career, explaining the opportunities and challenges faced by crofters on this very remote northerly part of the UK. My name is Elizabeth Johnson, I'm an Islander born and bred. I come from a big family that goes back generations here. Got involved with the spaceport right at the beginning because of my work with the Pure Energy Centre, which is hydrogen production and gases, etc. So the spaceport actually capitalised on a lot of existing skills and knowledge that was in Shetland as a whole and Unst in particular. And at the moment, I'm uh, doing a lot of work with visitor management because obviously um, there are a lot of visitors every week, but in particular when there's a test flight or a launch, there'll be a lot of extra folk coming up to the island and wanting to witness this historic event. Well, the spaceport came about non through some of the directors, Frank Strang, Scott Hammond, Debbie Strang, reading a report that was put together by the government, I think it's 2017, called the Scepter Report, and it identified Unst as being an ideal spot for a spaceport in the UK. And really, it is ideal because of the location, it's all about geography here. We're remote, there's nothing much uh, between West and, and Norway. Also, because we're at uh, 60 degrees north, it's a lot easier to get rockets up into orbit. The location is ideal here for uh, getting rockets into sun synchronous and polar orbits. It takes, uh, there are a lot less uh, fuel required for instance, so you're already working towards a more sort of environmentally friendly launch up here. And a lot of them launch companies that we're in discussions with are obviously working on more environmentally friendly ways of getting their rockets up into space with the fuels that they're using etc. At the moment um, I think it's about 50 percent of the information we get, environmental information we get on Earth comes from satellites so it's critical that satellites are up there and uh, I, I see nowadays they're looking at more environmentally friendly satellites, including I think they've launched the first wooden satellites to space now. So uh, a lot of the satellites that will be going up uh, into space is for environmental and medical uh, reasons. So a lot of folk likely don't think that's very good that we're here to put rockets up in space, nor satellites for that matter, but Everybody that watches TV, has mobile phones, anything that you use nowadays, including the internet, a lot of it is by satellites, so it's, it is really important. How once is going to cope with this extra population and, and activity on the island, but this is something that we're used to and have been for many years, because we're hosted at the MOD here for years, and that was a... A huge shock to us in, in when they left, when the airstrip shut and the MOD left, we're population halved. So we're, we're really looking forward to having a lot more economic activity on the island, a lot more folk on the island. The leisure centre will be utilised fully, the schools, the, the medical centre, uh, the shops, everything is going to benefit for having all this activity for the spaceport on the island. And hopefully it'll not just be the spaceport, it'll be the knock-on effects and other businesses starting up around the spaceport activity as well. So the investment in Unst uh, spaceport has been about 35 million. Um, and that's a, a huge impact for, for Shetland as a whole because even the rocket companies that come to the island try to utilise Shetland firms before bringing Fox for further afield. So, a lot of, I think they had every engineer in Shetland they could when they were ramping up for the first big engine test here. So, that's, that's a really good thing for, for UNST as a whole. 
It's about about 50,000 extra jobs to the UK, the space industry, and about 20 odd billion pounds worth of work. So, I mean, that's not to be uh, sniffed at. And, and we, we have planning permission here for three launch pads, and there are actually only five, going to be five launch pads in Europe, so we have three of them here. And we're gotten all our licenses, our um, operational license and, and um, our maritime licenses, our range licenses. We're, we're really a, a good piece of head of most other potential space spots in the UK. And we have clients that are queuing up now to come here. So it's going to be a very, very busy space spot when it's fully operational. I'm standing here looking down our the spaceport site and you can see at the top of the site there are various welfare uh, units and offices and then there's a big area just to the right hand side if you're looking at it that's where two more hangars we planning permission for three um, hangars and then there's machines operating down mid-site there and that'll be where satellite tracking is then obviously you can see the big building doing through the site is the big hangar area with the clean rooms and everything else in it and launch pad one. Launch pad two is slightly further down the site, no been built yet and launch pad three has been excavated and ready to be built right down at the bottom of the site. It's actually quite a big site and as you can see it's on a peninsula so it's a good place to launch but also a secure place to launch. Uh, so you can once we have a hazardous activities or a launch or a test happening, we can close off the whole area here. Looking ahead, um, there's definitely going to be a launch uh, in 2025 next year. Um, how many launches we don't keen yet? It just that's dependent on. Although we have our world licenses as a spaceport, every launch company has to have their own licenses, and in fact the satellite companies, so the clients' clients have to have their licenses. So it depends the speed that, at which all our customers can can get their licenses in place. The majority of the local community could could still mind when we had the MOD population here and how we used to have a lot more schools and shops and football teams and everything else so they can see the potential and so they're completely supportive of this project and and they hope that it can sort of bring the island back to what it was about 15, 20 years ago. We're very proactive in working with all the agencies, whether it's Nature Scott, SEPA, Historic Environment Scotland, because of course the site is built on a historic monument. The environment is, is one of our key priorities. Uh, during bird breeding season, we have a, an ornithologist that walks the site a couple of times a week, so we log every single bird and bit of wildlife on the site and keep a record of that. And in fact, there's more breeding pairs on the site for we came on it as they were before leading up to that. So it's the same with the local authority. We're proactive. We we meet with them regularly. We don't just go to Falk if they're a problem. We we speak to them on a very regular basis. So we try to keep um, on top of everything and make sure we're following rules and regulations, but go on an extra mile as well, if you like. There are always challenges building anything on a remote island. I mean, we had, to, as part of our planning conditions, undertack about nine million pounds worth of public road improvements. And, and indeed, uh, big, uh, entirely new section of road. Of course, to get to Unstfey, the Shetland mainland, there's two ferries as well, so that's a challenge. We actually, at one point, we utilised all the rock and aggregate for the local quarry on the island and we actually took about 14 barge loads of, of aggregate for Norway across and we're lucky on the island we had piers, so we took it into the pier in Unst. We also had a lease of airstrip and 
we can bring things in if we need to via the airstrip as well. So one of the selling points for for Shetland as a whole is been the fact that we the different industries we've had on Shetland in the past. We had a heck of a lot of skills and knowledge, including engineering, which is very prevalent on a spaceport. That was a, a, a good selling point for a lot of the, the um, companies that were potentially going to come and launch for here. Because they, when, it's my understanding, when Sulem Bowl started as the oil terminal, everybody had to be brought in, and then gradually they upskilled the local workforce and and they ended up with um, the majority working living and working in the islands and the space uh, industry is exactly the same the launch companies are hopeful that they get locals trained up so that they don't have to bring folk into the island every single time they need to launch obviously the the, the peninsula here uh, which is is Referred to in spaceport terms as Lambanes, but we always kent it as Hemerskov when we were young. Uh, his various landowners, um, and the, the the site is leased for, and um, we we work with the landowners to try to ensure that not only do they benefit through leasing, but other things such as. The land tax, we need it for the road improvements. You put up new fences, you put up new sheep points, you, you try to work with we, we folk. No project on an island is going to succeed unless you bring the community with you. And the Lixo, an agricultural shed for the shareholders doing the road, put a lot of uh, aggregate there to upgrade their car park. and. Just things like that, that all helps. And yeah, they, they, because there's so much support for this project on the island, the, the landowners and the crofters are no different. They, they try to help wherever they can, whenever they can. I'm Richard Spence, from Vars in Ons. This is Vars where we're standing. The place where I was born at, came into life. and. I think I'll be about the fourth generation of our family, you know what? It's had the ground here, so I think it's the best place in the world and I have a beautiful view of the Northern Arc. Well, up until three years ago, I wrote to the county, rod mine, and before that I was been working count to S. Anderson and Sons and various contractors, and we saw an opportunity, me and my nephews, when the Space Centre started. So we started up our own business, what we call it, plant, and we were being up at the Space Centre working, but the work dried up a bit, so we're diversified into other jobs. So we're doing anything, we're tearing driveways, concrete, and just anything. A day is predominantly in Unst, but we are being outside Unst for pretty much the jobs. So we, we have been working, we do work through the SSE, so only power cuts were called in sometimes. So. Also, what I do. I like the Shetland Sheep, so I'm a very active member of the Shetland Flockbook Trust. I'm ex-president of that, and I go away to the Holland Show and represent them now. I've been doing that for two years, and I think I'm doing that next year as well, so I think it's very important to try and promote Shetland as much as we can. So that's my kind of main things I'm at the moment. But I used to, in my younger days, I used to hey, uh, sell the regattas we bought and things like that. I really enjoyed that. I was never just a sportsman, I just liked the sailing and that was my kind of sport. So. Precision is the most northerly island, it's a sailing point. Especially for our ship, we hear Shetland ponies as well, and, and we've been doing no bad with them now this last 40 years, although there's there really not much money to be made on them. For me, I say, that was my dad's passion, so I kind of carry it on. And my, my sister and nieces work on me as well. What we're challenged is, I would say, is the high cost of getting materials here, especially feeding. We did it import straw for our bedding and we take in some hay as well. But that main, the main cost is freight. It's not the actual what the producer is getting for us. It comes up from the mainland, uh, Scotland. But I don't know exactly what, what the freight cost is, but it's a tremendous cost. Like, well, this time of day now is 
Twenty past two, and it's dark now. No. So it'll be dark by back at three. It'll be probably dark today by back at three, I would think. And it's not right light till about back eight in the morning, so we don't have much time. We're, in, we're really living in the dark. But then we gain in the summer when we get to what we call the summer dim. And you have to look forward to that. I don't know what would happen to you here with the dark nights. <laughs> But the dark nights is their, their benefits as well, because you can maybe take your time somebody and maybe up into your shed and visit you and you sit down and have a few yards with them and maybe supposedly meant to be minding about the machinery and some neighbour will drop by and you'll end up laughing at it and you'll sit and speak and I enjoy all that with them as well, so that's all part of life is on the edge as they say. Like Elizabeth, Richard believes the spaceport will have a positive impact on the Shetland economy, bringing employment and keeping young people on the island. It's made a big difference to a lot of folk around about this area, but the only thing that I will say, it could have maybe been a bit better. But um, that, that's, well, it's really looking to the future, maybe more with employment for, and bring more prosperity to the island and hopefully more young folk will settle the island because a lot of the young folks go going to the island to, to get jobs and when they go they don't know they come back, very few comes back. So I was one at, I never even got to the Anderson High School in Larwick, I stayed here for my better education I did get, which was not, I didn't do very well at school but I was more kind of want to be with and put among the animals and work and things so that was so yeah, the Swiss Centre, it, <coughs> it will bring, it does bring work, so, and I suppose you kind of have to be that. Yeah, well, we were brought up with RAF here, and we got on really well with them. My me, me father out there was Mr. Stein at on the RAF station, and, and they were up, when we were at school, we had RAF to Burns, and we still keep in touch with some of them. And, um, Great friends was made through it, and they were very good for that. They were never no bother with them. And uh, then the airport was here as well, and, and that was a lot of employment. That's all gone now, so it really was a devastating blow to Unston, both that we near enough at the same time. And, but the Unston recovered, so I think I think the Unst people was maybe more trying things themselves now, because they did for new. A job was maybe easier to come by on, on the RAF camp and the airport was and they had to try things new and obviously the salmon farming camp is well and that's the main employer on the island at the moment and so it'll be a bit of diversification you can maybe pick up some different kind of jobs from the younger people. Yeah with regard to the, the spaceport I would say the Mr. the Falcon on supports that but as I said, there are, just no matter what you're trying, there are always some people that will no support or they'll think it's wrong, but that's life. Life has to go on, you need employment, so you have to look at the bigger picture of it. In terms of the environment with the, with the Swiss sport, I don't really keen with that. But look at all the carry on that was on in, when it was a RAF base in the wartime. That was for a few years and disappeared. And, I thought I kind of regenerated around the boot at them. I'm sure, I think any building site is a mess, because I'm out in the midst of my life when you're doing construction. So once it all settles down and I thought a lot of grass grows back here and there and things, I, I would think the environment, the environment is, is great at recovering and, and regenerating and that, if given time and pace to do so. And I think it will. <laughs>